mom. That's the message I got in the 90s, that you're either a hot babysitter or a sexless, annoyed mom. <laughs> it's time for Breaking Bread with Papa. Hey! Don't you know? Hey! It's also a show. Hey! You could also rent and I know. see for a bit. Yeah. Oh, well, here's the problem. Do you have dogs? So smart. We didn't time it out right, where... The kids are leaving. My daughter just graduated college, and my other one's in college. Good job. Yeah. Damn. It's pretty great. Comedian. Doing Comedian. That. Incredible. Muscle yeah, top. pretty weird. Thank you. Uh, and it's like, okay, let's just go to New York for three months. And we have this pug and this giant black lab and a cat <gasps> and a lizard. <gasps> and <laughs> we're trapped. How do you feel about leaving them and having like a house sitter? I fine. That'd be fine. Do it if we have somebody that would stay for a Come long time. Come for the time. summer. It's so. I fun. know. It's so fun. It's I love so it. So great. We you, better start. We're so on a fucking not, roll. So what's that? We better start. We're on a fucking oh, roll. Yeah, we're going. We've already. But started. But let's continue. We are. Yeah. Okay, then let's keep going. I just uh, want to make sure we were capturing the <laughs> magic talk, this fucking chemistry, baby. Um. Yeah, you gotta come. What's your yeah. wife's name? My wife's name is Cynthia. Cynthia. Oh, my God. Tom Papa and Cynthia. Spending yeah. Spending summer. An empty <laughs> nester summer in New York. Also, one kid's already in college. That's the house sitter. I know. That is. Yeah. But, well, the, yeah. But the problem is um, my wife really wants to be with the kids. Oh, duh. duh yeah. Duh. I do, too. Yeah. But I, I would go for a little bit. Do they still It's feel, so bizarre. Do they still feel like your little itty-bitty babies? Do you feel yeah. their toddler chunkiness in them? Yes. It's, like, so delicious. It's insane. It's insane. You go through these periods where you, I can't, you know, your phone is always is feeding you your life. Like, the phone came out oh, when I they chills. were born. Mm. And there's certain days oh you gosh. can look at. Last night I was looking at Lena the older one, mm. she was probably 12 here in New York in our apartment. And I was like, oh, man, remember that little skinny, oh. like, <laughs> funky New York kid? And now she's like this woman who's going to come here and get her own apartment. <laughs> Ooh, it gives me chills. And it's like, I don't even know her, but I know the yeah, feeling now. Exactly. And I see, you know, I just feel so on the thread. Um, we're on this thread. There's this um, Slaughterhouse Five. I think it's Slaughterhouse uh -huh. Five. Yeah. Kurt Vonnegut has this bizarre, like, dream scene of uh -huh. like some other planet where space time is different and humans are slugs. Right. And at the end, at yeah. the big, at the slug tail is the baby crawling, uh -huh. and at the slug head is the old person. Like, mm -hmm. and that's that's how I feel these days, where I feel connected yeah. to my younger self and I feel connected to my old fucking Fran Lebowitz, New Yorker. I know it, you know? And I, I know. see that in my daughter, too, where I'm like, she's already no longer... I, I just would think about, like, John Candy when she was a baby, when babies look like middle-aged, <laughs> yeah. chunky men. It really cracks me up. And I, like, think about her little baby self and, it, like, this yeah. office worker and her little button-down. And now she's this, like, gorgeous kiddo, and I can feel her when she's 12, when she's in college. And How she's old like is she now? Three. Three, yeah. <sighs> it really is... What's really remarkable is that that little kid that you met coming home from the hospital is the same. Like, there's really, they they show uh, up who they are. It's kind of insane. It's so magical. And yeah. my mind is blown. I, I <laughs> microdosed this weekend. You did? Yeah, and it was, like, really nice. Like, my husband was, like, sober and chill. Uh -huh. and, or maybe, so a little more than micro. Maybe a little high Yeah. chill. And, um, well, it was more than micro. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't sound I, micro. <laughs> it, it, it revealed itself to be more than micro, uh -huh. where I was like, oh, here we are. <laughs> but it was so cool, because I feel like I'm tripping balls all the time with my kiddo, just when, when I yeah. make that space in my mind and heart to really be present, don't be thinking about mm -hmm. work, don't be thinking about the other thing, mm -hmm. it's like tripping. You're looking at their faces, you're looking through space time uh -huh. at your ancestors, and it's just, <sighs> it's nuts. Yeah. But then the tripping was wild. I was like, it's too much. Mm. Yeah. It's too much. Because <laughs> I know. I've, I've microdosed. I'm going to turn this off just because I'm it's blowing right on me. Yes, I know from your um, stand-up that you like... A little weed. Yeah. But do you like little weed. mushrooms as well? Yeah, I've been, yeah, I did. Do you know how to do this remote? The, um, yeah, I smoked weed forever, but I'm not that great on weed anymore. It kind of, um, there was a moment when I realized what it was doing to my funny. 
like it was good to kind of give me insight and kind of get me out of you know what I was my normative way of thinking but it wasn't uh and it was really made me very funny early mm. and then I hung out with somebody who I would be funny with all the time who's just a a regular guy and he just ran circles around me mm. and I was like oh and I was getting lazy and all this but now with this pot renaissance I'm like I want to go back to it but it just doesn't it just has a much much smaller place in my life but I have been microdosing a bunch nice and going about your normal life and seeing how cool yeah and once in a while it'll kind of like cross the line and you're like i shouldn't be driving yeah <laughs> Ooh, no not driving not driving that's the nice thing about new york <laughs> yeah. um did you start microdosing out of like a depressive place i find a lot of people do that no or have been doing that ever. no but it was pretty i mean just that you hit like four in the afternoon and you're like Wow, nothing bothers me, and I'm not, mm -hmm. and I'm not sleepy. Yeah, weed ocu occupies a smaller space in my life too. I found myself yeah. much more sober. I guess also because of the forced sobriety of pregnancy, where before I got pregnant, I would be like, I didn't drink today or yesterday. Uh huh. <laughs> it's like, good job, bitch. What? <laughs> Damn, yeah. a day. Uh -huh. And like, and yeah. then like you know, and then with being pregnant, like um, you know, I talk about it in my latest Santa Bauer that it's like. I did smoke a little, <laughs> <laughs> but like eventually, like I really didn't. And then yeah. especially when the baby comes, like <clears throat> you need all your senses and your alertness and yes. like, gosh, and it's so new. It's like, no, thank you for the uncertainty that can unfold. But yeah. now, um, she's my, my daughter's three and mm -hmm. it's just, and I'm 37 and yeah. like my body isn't, I'm not capable of juggling all the things or faking to myself that like I can do it all. I don't think I could do it all then. Yeah. But I could just sort of hold more noise. I don't want noise. I want like yeah. sounds and melodies <laughs> separated and one at a time, please. Yeah. And you have to manage it. Like it's serious stuff. Like something goes down. No, thank you. You want to be on high alert. You're a girl. I always said that. I said in girl. my act. I used to say in my act that being a parent, you're like a volunteer fireman. <laughs> like exactly. you're always just hanging around. You're not doing that much, but you're ready. Yeah. If shit goes yep. down, yep. you've got to throw on yep. the hat and do stuff. Totally. It's like um, yeah. not cool. Yeah. To like, <laughs> you'd I'd feel like such a fucking loser if uh -huh. something bad happened and I was blazed like a hundred percent but like my body too I just can't like when I do get high it's like such a tiny little and yeah. the microdose I, I was like so tiny but then I was like Woo. <laughs> <laughs> it just I think I think also like my heart expanding for this child uh -huh. and being a person in the world with a child yeah it's like um so much hits me so much hits me more you know the yeah. news I'm I'm sadder and cr like viscerally crying you know yeah. whatever so things hit hit me i'm, I'm more sensitive I'm more we sensitive. started blocking out the news when the kids were emerging because it's just so i mean any source on television was so toxic anyway it wasn't really just news how old are they your girls now they're 22 and 19 which is also like when 24 hour 24 hour news is new it's from 9-11 yeah. the ticker tape yeah all that used to be only for emergencies right and just when your first was born, yep, was uh, twenty two. So that was yeah. 2000 she was born at two thousand two. Yeah, exactly. So like that that twenty four hour shit. That's when it started becoming poison. Poison. And I remember during nine eleven, uh, we decided to have her after after nine eleven. And my I remember calling my cousin who's had kids a couple years older, like he, and was he uh, he or she in Jersey? They were in Jersey. They were in Jersey. And. I called him like, holy shit, can you believe what's happening to the world? And he was like, nah, I'm not really watching it. I was like, what? <laughs> I mean, the world is is collapsing around us. And he was like, dude, I got kids. We're just kind of rolling around on the floor. And I was like, whoa. Mm. And then when I had kids, I got it. It was like, the, the world's going to figure it out. We've got to figure out, you know, Thomas the Tank yeah. engine. And <laughs> it's a real privilege. I feel so privileged to be able to have a kid. Um, safely and securely and all the access to the basic fun functions everyone on the planet um, should have access to. Yeah. Um, because then then it, then it, your world privately can be the whole world. Right. Like you're not surviving for basic uh, for needs. For everything, yeah. It's just um, it's yeah. such a privilege. And my, like, 
my mind is blown about it, you know? It's yeah, blown. 100%. So cute that I mean, two girls. Ugh. Yeah, the best. God the love best. You. God bless oh you. my God. The Papa family. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the Papas, and it's the all Papa women. Girls. <laughs> it's so all, sweet. It's all girls. It's so sweet. Did you grow up? Did you have like female friends growing up? I had two sisters. Oh, yeah. And a There's ton no of female spot. friends. Yeah. yeah. You seem like it was all a man who could laugh with women. A hundred percent. I had an essay in my one of my books about knowing when I shifted from that because my mother was very funny. And she had a couple of my like fake aunts who were like her best friends who were really funny. And I remember I'd hang in the kitchen with them and they'd be doing voices and they'd be funny. And, blah. and then you go into the den where the guys were watching football and it was like, blah, 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 blah. and I was like, this is boring. consuming, consuming. And so, the women are generating. Yeah, in the kitchen. right. So I would always hang over there and I would like and then there came a moment. I don't know, like, in, I don't know when I was probably 14, 15, something like that, where one of the aunts, I started hanging with the guys more. Uh-oh. And my aunt... Looking for trouble. Said, my aunt said, uh, oh, he's a man now. Mm. And it really so stuck sad. with me because it was like this playful... A genuine loss of playfulness. Yeah. To be honest. Yeah. Becoming a man. In I didn't this lose, world. I didn't lose it completely. Yeah. But there was... Well, like, I'm sure you returned to it. Yeah, a hundred percent. But there was, it, or it seems, it feels as though you return to it. Yeah, yeah. But they were, yeah. I mean, to this day, they're just much more interesting to talk to. <laughs> it's, it reminds me of my my brother and I. My brother Elliot is a comedian, also a writer and performer, and we spent hours and hours and hours when we were kids making sketch videos. Yeah. My mom's dad, <laughs> Grandpa Dave. <laughs> He was he was making sketch videos alone. Yeah. You know Pavarotti, the opera singer. Yeah, he threw a, a dish rag on his head, a, a washcloth on his head, and he was Pavarotten. It was the scariest <laughs> video. I, I was like, "That's Grandpa!" It was so scary. Pavarotten, it's amazing. And um, he had a network called K R A P TV, <laughs> Crap TV, that my brother and I inherited once we started making sketch this videos. Is brilliant. It it was brilliant. <laughs> yeah, it was so creative and playful. yeah, and um. And then my brother and I moved into uh, a merger and, and had the moved it to GBS, the Glazer Broadcasting System. We were obsessed. We were obsessed. Wow. And my brother on this old Sony camcorder would, you know, edit in real time how it yeah. used to be done. Where it's uh -huh. like, let's do that again. We record over the tape. <laughs> like, it's just <laughs> like so like far old. away. <laughs> yeah. From now. And he would also um, yeah. have like title cards of index cards and then reverse the, you could make it lime green, <laughs> believe it. I mean, you could inverse the colors, like just so 90s. And um, so when I was like, so we started that when I was about three or four. Yeah. And when I was maybe eight or nine, my brother was like, no, thank you. And was like going through puberty, you know. Right. And it kind of reminds me of that, where it was that loss, like oh, lo a loss to manhood. Yeah. It takes so much from this world. It does, and you know, it's a natural course, but it's. I think if you're surrounded by, women, you kind of you don't you come you return to it. There's like it, or you don't well, completely that's abandon the, it. That's the difference between manufactured manhood and true manhood, right? Which I think is the support of yeah women and all people, right? That's true manhood when men are strong enough and secure enough in their masculinity that they are open and receptive, right? Yeah, mm, I love it. It's great. The only time I my wife asked me the other day, did you ever were you ever bummed out that you didn't have a boy? And I was like, there wasn't one minute of being like, I want boy. But every time I would get in a car, like when I'm traveling, if it was someone from a like an, an immigrant culture, if it was like Jamaican or if it was uh, Cuban or something like those masculine, there's, there is that thing of like, how many children do you have? I've got two girls. So you're trying for the boy now? Mm -hmm. They would always mm -hmm. ask, like it was just a thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but man, no way. Yeah. No way. Congratulations on the movie. Thank you. You made a really good movie. Thank you so much. This is really, it's Thank so, you. Uh, you fall in love with these characters. There's like this, I mean, it's very Thank funny, but you. it's charming. It's like you really do fall in love, like early. Like you, you thank hook, you. I got hooked early oh, thank on, you. on wow. them and their relationship. It's yeah. really, yeah. really well done. <laughs> really? You. I mean, that's such a huge thing. <laughs> Thanks. It's I a big it. grown up movie. I appreciate that. Thank <laughs> you. I, um,
It's my pleasure and my honor. <laughs> yeah. Really. When did uh, you wrote it? But yeah. I, I read, did I read that it wasn't really your idea at first? It was your manager's idea? Yes, my manager, Susie Fox. Representation in this industry is like, <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. But Susie's a real one. She is uh, a real driver uh -huh. with ideas and instincts, good instincts. Wow. And she had this sort of just a flash of like the headline of me and a, like, um, in the shower, it just came to her like Alana and a best friend. And, the be and she, Alana gets knocked up, but the best friend has kids. And um, Susie's girls are five and seven now. Uh -huh. But they were, oh my gosh, they were like one and three or, or two and four at the time. Right. So she was in the um, trenches of early parenthood. How old are, how, uh, 22 and 19, you said. 22 and 19. So you did it, my daughter's already three. I don't know if we're going to have a second, but um, oh, they, yeah. they would already, it would already be years apart. Three yeah, well, years, three, four, yeah. Three years is pretty, is, is a, a nice space, but it's mm -hmm. still like, I got two little, you have two individuals who are like super drunk. You know what I mean? Like, it's like for so long, they're <laughs> yeah. like so wasted, shwasty. Um, so yeah. Susie was in like the real trenches. They're 21 months apart. And uh -huh. um, my co-writer, Josh Rabinowitz, and right. I, his wife, Annie Semberg, and I were pregnant at the same time. Uh -huh. So we were filling that role of Eden, my character, who was totally naive to the responsibilities of being a parent and Susie was filling the role of Dawn who has a husband and two kids and right. is just struggling to survive day to day right so you were pregnant when you were writing it yeah um yeah. just a few months pregnant when I when we started writing oh it. that's so perfect yeah it was awesome because yeah also the physical um hard comedy of pregnancy was cracking me up. I was so sick for <laughs> yeah. six months, oh, God. but it was making me laugh because I was like, this is absurd. I would take like a sip of water, yeah. open the fridge. Ugh, you know, Erwan, obviously in LA. Uh -huh. We, I, I had loaded up. I'm like literally, <laughs> literally gagging as I speak right now to think of Erwan, not for the socio-political <laughs> reasons, but for the yeah. actual food itself. I would, yeah. something about it, <laughs> just gaggy. I would open the fridge and I <laughs> I would throw up in my hands. It was crazy. It was so I just I overloaded. It's, I I overdid it. You need to be like graceful and piecemeal. It's so insane. As my my, oh my, my nephew's wife is pregnant right now. And it's so absurd. We had for my daughter's graduation, we had this house and everybody came over. Are you, you warm? You had this house? Are you warm? No, I'm great. Okay. Uh, yeah, we rented a, a house oh. near the college oh, because cool. we have a big family. So for everyone to come nice, over rather than nice. go to a restaurant. I thought you were saying at your house. And I was like, what's this verbiage? Right. <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. got it. And uh, you rented everyone's just cool. like, everyone's just, you know, having a nice little, you know, family time. And I would look over at her and it's like, there's like something so intense going on inside and everybody oh. just acts like we're just eating you know some spinach dip and you know what i mean oh. and there's this person who's just like wow i'm growing something inside yeah. me yeah who's acting like she's yeah. just at a party my best friend the other day she's <laughs> pregnant with her second our children her yeah. first they're best friends they're inseparable mm -hmm. and she's pregnant and I, I was just like good to see you and don't forget you're growing a person inside your body in addition to all the other <laughs> things you're doing today bye yeah. it's like don't forget don't forget we just pretend it's not happening yeah and the way the world is organized we want to deny that women can do this and are the ones who can do this mm -hmm. like the whole system feels what organized. do you mean Oh, it's like, you know, a few men control the majority of the world's wealth because they're not able to create life. So now they're creating AI and it's like, girl, right. that's not life. You know yeah. what I mean? You're that's just extractive. That's it's more extraction. <laughs> yeah. Um and uh so I feel like we're in denial of um where we truly come from. Right. In order for capitalism to continue. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what I mean. That's all I mean. <laughs> that's all um, you mean. Like the whole system is just built to Yeah. Keep selling us more stuff. I was also shook at the horniness of pregnancy. I had always, mm -hmm. I was born in 1987. I was consuming my my lion's share of TV and film in the 90s. Right. Really given the message that you are, you stop being sexy, you start being a, an annoying bitch when you become a mom. That's the message I got in the 90s, that you're either a hot babysitter or a sexless, annoying, annoyed mom. <laughs> and how horny I was was, hilarious it was unbelievable it's kind of insane. The spun <laughs> what's insane too is there's the husband you it's a turn on 
Like you for get, sure. Like your girl, your you're, DNA is like, look what we did. You're like, <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Everything is pulsing. It's it's nuts. Even after we had yeah. our baby, we were just so excited. You know, mm-hmm. there was just so much energy. Um, and also, no joke, that was like one of the few times I wouldn't be sick. Oh. The the context switching. Oh, I, I also yeah. shot this show, the after party, for six months while I was pregnant. Right. And it was so weird that I would be filming and my body knew to act now uh-huh. and then they'd be like cut and I'd be like oh be right back and I'd run and puke immediately I'd be dr- driving home uh yeah. I ask for a car in LA because uh-huh. I'm not driving to work it's so scary yeah. but like I would um <laughs> I'd be like thank you so much have a good one shut the door and puke in the bushes I couldn't make it a step because my body was like you're safe to puke now Isn't you're at that work weird? that's so crazy don't you think isn't it strange that we can't like harness that distraction because like you never feel sick on stage like there's that thing. but you are harnessing it you're on stage yeah but i mean but, yeah but then how about but when you're walking past the bushes how about not throwing up in them you know what i mean like why can't right we just to throw up yeah maybe and and what are you gonna do never throw up i hope not yeah you have to i'm a boy we don't like to throw up <laughs> i know boys are scared <laughs> But I don't then, like it. It's okay. We'll rub, I don't, rub your back. I don't like it I at mean, all. I mean, it's like I was doing it so much, it really became. Yeah, that is so. <laughs> I'm puking and I'm like <laughs> doing this like while it's coming out. Just like it was so funny. Yeah, it yeah. is kind of it is, uh, it, you know, it's so remarkable that uh, you have to as a woman, you have to do all of these things, even without children, just the natural course of menstruating and going through your life like that you have oh so you're just going to be sick once a month and try and kick ass and and fight in this system to to do what you're going to do women are remarkable for doing it but it's sadistic that we have to it really is it really is and i was even thinking about it when you were running around talking about the film and doing all the press it's just so funny it's just a funny thing and it's got some good meaning to it and stuff like that but i i don't know does it get like do you ever get tired of having to be like, this is also, I'm planting a flag for everything that's ignored about how great it is to be a woman? Like, you know what I mean? Like when a guy goes out on, on promotes his movie, he's like, yeah, it's just this movie and just da 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 you know? And it's funny and when he fell down the gutter and it was hilarious. Yeah. But there's always going to be a moment when you're, uh, and I don't know if you feel like ennobled and like emboldened and, Talk it because you do it. Ennobled? I don't know that word. Uh, did I make it up? I don't know. Like the feeling like that you're um you're empowered to mm, mm. be in a place to talk mm. about it? Or is it a drag sometimes that you can't just talk about comedy? Um <clears throat> so first of all, the thing is like I never intend to be political. Yeah. I just am because I'm a woman with progressive ideas which are simply that every person on the planet should have basic human rights How dare that's you. like super radical what is wrong with you in 2024 that's super radical <laughs> um so when people ask me like did you intend i'm like no i'm just being real about my experience yeah and it's you're not and you're not saying that but i'm saying like in the all these press conversations i'm like what does it mean about you and the system we're talking about that this is um, that you think I have to strategize being honest yeah. about being pregnant. Like right. it's all I have is the experience I have. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I actually feel, um, it's my duty to, uh, plant this, this sentiment mm-hmm. in reality, right? which is that we live in a system that's psychotic <laughs> and sadistic <laughs> and doesn't have to be. This is one way 8 billion people or 300 million if you're talking about just America, this is, we, we live in one way that 300 million should be org- people could be organized, but not the way. Uh-huh. Where we live, you know, it's, it's, my, um, it's my duty, but it's also my privilege and honor. I'm so grateful yeah. to have the um, awareness of it because I feel protected by my knowledge. Right. Um, rather than like floating in questions and not knowing Mm -hmm. the reality I live in or the feelings I have about it. I know the reality I live in and I know the feelings I have about it. And that's, um, I'm proud of that. Yeah. But it's like, we forget we're swimming in this system, which benefits a a handful of billionaires. Right. I think whom are all men and our whole 
let's focus on the U.S. Our whole system is to make sure that they keep their wealth and keep, get more and more, while the majority of people um, don't have basic human rights. I mean, you know, our insurance is privatized. That's even you and I don't have that basic right. We yeah. uh, race to make enough money to pay for our insurance rather than just having it as a basic human right as a necessity. Right. Um, we it could isn't. be organized around trees, our society, right? Around preserving trees. <laughs> yeah. And I bet children would then get have healthcare. Right. Like we could be organized around um, animal rights. Mm -hmm. We could be organized. Like the the focus of our society here in America could be food for children. Mm -hmm. But it's not. Yeah. It's for like a few billionaires to retain their wealth and have it grow exorbitantly. It's an insane thing. And I'm feeling it now because I'm watching my <clears throat> wife deal with her mother, who's like 90, and watching the economics of what happens at the end. And it's like you have to, if you get, if you, <laughs> if you play really well and get very lucky in this system and make a bunch of money, it's they're going to come and get it all at the end when you're dying. Like it's so expensive to just to die care for an old person, mm -mm -mm. just to have an old person like not be in a shitty place. Right. And it's so expensive to have your mom die. Yeah. All our moms are going to die. Yeah. And that's really expensive. Super expensive. When that's the person, those are, that's the role that allowed us to be here in the first place. Yeah. Shouldn't you get money back? <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. Shouldn't you get a rebate? Yeah. Or at least a bed <laughs> in a place that's really lovely. It's it's. And this <laughs> is another thing about like, you know, why I'm proud to um, root my reality and my role in it. That's really, if I may interrupt, Please. that is a great way to say it. Because it, it, to, to root your reality is really perfect because it is, it encompasses so much more than, uh, you know, talking about a, being a pregnant woman in a comedy or your it's much bigger. Mm -hmm. To root your reality is really well phrased. Thank you. Yeah. It's um it's also helps me stay sane. Yeah. You know, I grew up in like a, a mostly white suburb on Long Island and I and um not in the Jewish area in uh -huh. like Italian, Irish and just white people. And I was, uh, you know, a minority as a Jew in where I grew up. Right. And we always had this um, pull to the city, to the arts, and to, um, we would see Broadway shows, and yeah. like Tuesday nights were like half off for kids or something. I don't know. <laughs> you know, like whatever. Yeah. And, um, but I had so many questions, especially like having an education from my Hebrew school about Jews. Right. And it was like, why are there only... Why are there mostly white people here? That's not like white people don't grow on trees in Suffolk County. You know what I mean? Like, and I just always had these questions that I've come to find the answers to and educated myself um, to understand. Mm -hmm. And man, do I feel while the system is still fucked up, I feel at least like my feet are planted mm -hmm. knowing why and that my suspicions aren't random, but um, valid. Were those suspicions... Um Instigated by your parents, or were you just a curious kid? Or in, uh, just a curious, more yeah. more of a curious person who was like very, um, honestly, like painfully observant. Right. <laughs> yeah. Wish I like that's that creative sensitivity. Like that's right, and like in such a way where like I, I, I do so much therapy now, and I'm like really practicing being and being present because uh -huh. I couldn't like lose myself even as a kid. Yeah. I, I was so like, and you know that like comedian way of being prepared to not be to be made fun of and be both okay with it, but also have like the funny thing to say and da da da. Uh, yeah. And it's like, you know, it's um <laughs> also painful. Yeah. Yeah. It's an interesting thing when you know I talk to comics and they start going to therapy. Uh I don't, but I know their hesitation going in of the the thing that made you funny was mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. was being ready and yeah. angry and and then then it's like well if I find peace am I going to lose my comedy but invariably it actually makes it grow yeah it's actually deeper yep it's like um how in science like a scientific discovery usually leads to a slight grasp of an understanding of how much you don't know uh huh 
And that's like true of within. Right. right. And it's like, you're, you're not going to, don't worry. You're not going to solve it. Right. Don't <laughs> that's worry. Right. Don't worry. You won't find peace. Yeah, that's until right. Until you die. No worries. Yeah. You're not going to yeah. Zen out and ruin your comedy. No worries. You <laughs> yeah. fucked up. That's why you're here. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's why you, that's why you've emerged. I used to be like, everyone needs <laughs> therapy, but it was probably because I was uncomfortable with how much I needed it. Whereas now hearing that you don't go to therapy, I'm like, good for you. Oh, really? You don't seem like you need it, to tell you the truth. You seem real, like, at peace. Yeah, pretty much. I think comedy, I think, is... Yeah, your therapy. Yeah. Right. I think in a big way, and writing, and all that kind of... They, you have, like, your little your little outlets, or what have you. Um, do I know Josh? Do I know your co-writer? Oh, you better. He's the fucking best. Yeah? He's the fucking best. Our, did you know Kevin Barnett? Yes. He was our mutual best friend who passed away oh, on right. whom Claude is based uh, and, and who a lot of this story is based because he was one of my best friends I've ever had wow. and Josh is too. And so much about this movie between me and Michelle's character, Eden and Dawn, right. is about the partnership that friends have. Uh-huh. And especially as um, the you know manufactured uh, nuclear family mm-hmm. can, as capitalism is failing and those structures are losing their, you know, uh, there's no, nobody can buy a fucking house. Nobody can, um, nobody has health insurance. Like that idea of like one partner is, um, growing. And I think, uh, millennials and Gen Z are finding that one person can't be your everything that you have, like that your friends provide some support. And also conversely that, you know, I, I'm, I continue to be surprised at how my husband is my best friend, mm-hmm. like in a, a genuine way of beyond, I love him so much. Also yeah. like checking out girls, right? <laughs> throwing shade at people. You know what right. I mean? Like, yeah. like, um, like, uh, really, um, <laughs> on point observations that could cut a bitch, you know, like, yeah. I love that about my husband's, um, perspective. And it's like, you know, there's just, these roles are more fluid and, and Kevin inspired both the Claude character, but also that, cause he was such mm-hmm. a great partner as a friend. Right. Um, right. so anyway, he and Josh were like work husbands and, uh, and writing partners and they wrote on broad city together. And, um, yeah, Josh uh, did stand up too. He's so funny. He yeah. looks like um, he's a perfect Marty McFly for Halloween. Oh, yeah. he's, <laughs> he's so perfect. He's the best. And his wife's fucking dope. It's and great. it was so fun to write this, like, kind of, you know, Annie, um, his wife works for uh, fights for reproductive justice all day, every day. Uh-huh. And it was so fun to, like, it was almost like my husband and uh, David and Annie, Josh's wife, were included in the process because. As we were writing Hassan Minhaj and Michelle Buteau's relationship, uh-huh. reflecting on our own and being work husband and wife ourselves, yeah. it was like so fun to like have them included. And Josh is just oh, yeah. he's so sensitive, and he he can <laughs> really he's so um, he's so good at writing for any kind of person, right? Because he's like he really listens and. Making him laugh is so rewarding. <laughs> I love it. The actor who played uh, your love interest, so so good. Sorry, intoxicating. I didn't yeah, and and I so mean, you're just, sweet. Yeah, you're falling in love with him. Yeah, at the same time, Stefan James. He he's is like really a good. truly like high caliber actor. Like yeah. whoa, and he was he was like had like unsure footing stepping into a comedy, and I was like, babe. We're knuckleheads, babe. Right. <laughs> you you are an actor. Like he is such uh, this show with yeah. Julia Roberts and and Barry Jenkins and and um, in- incredible. Uh-huh. And um, I think what was so cool about Stefan's performance is his I think releasing of performance and rather mm-hmm. offering his true presence. Doesn't he seem just like yeah himself? With, I know there's certain actors. <laughs> it's you're like. They're hardly doing anything, yeah. and they're doing so yes. much. Yes, yes. He was so sweet. He was so sweet. Yeah, it was really, really great. Yeah, you you, you felt him throughout the whole movie. Right, right. Like, and that was really, that was so Kevin. We just were holding Kevin so close Yeah, throughout the whole sense. movie. That makes real sense. Yeah. All right, I'll ask it. The uh, I was reading this article by Thomas Friedman today, Um 
He was talking about God, the. I'm so uneducated. It's like crazy. No, please. Who's who is that? Thomas Friedman from the New York Times. For sure, don't know him. Come on. I don't. I'm what? sorry. I mean, I'm sure he's my cousin or some shit, but I don't know him. Yeah. As a Jewish American from Long Island, uh, he should be your lighthouse. Don't tell him and cut this out. <laughs> Thomas Friedman. Thomas Friedman. He's he's Love these been Jews writing about the Middle East name. forever. He's so brilliant and hopeful. Oh God. He's just great. <laughs> Fuck. And he was talking about uh when you were talking about, you know, when things are we're creating these new families because people can't right. afford houses and stuff. And right. the he was listing today uh a whole bunch of other Oh, sorry, Structures that, <laughs> that lean forward. That's I'm gonna good. stay where I am. Okay. I'll come to you, Thomas Friedman. Let's clean this up. He love him. One of my favorite writers. Yeah, you know all his work. Love him. You probably started the article, but I'll say it anyway. Yeah, and as a Jew from Long Island, obviously I know who he is. <laughs> of We're course. likely cousins. Probably. Okay. Uh, he was talking about the the thing that makes him nervous in this era that uh, Trump has kind of spawned is uh, it's. It's not just that the economics are wonky of this system, but it's also that we're losing all of the pillars that would provide uh, structure for society, religion, uh, the economics of it all, um, morality in our in our leaders, uh, all of these things that we one time you could like put a kid into the into it and feel like you're going to be okay and that to me is more that to me was an upsetting little article because it's it's on so many fronts but you know i mean no offense to thomas friedman i love him one mm-hmm. of my favorite writers <laughs> yes but i think it's a lack of imagination that is resulting in a dead end and feeling um feeling hopeless Mm -hmm. and then spreading it outward and hoping it's true rather than an individual feeling. Okay. I think the organization of society so far has been manufactured and benefiting a few, Mm -hmm. but you know, things have been slowly getting worse toward this industrialization of fucking everything, including prisons Mm -hmm. forever. And uh, uh, since the beginning of this country, but especially since world war two, we've got plastic in our oceans the planet's burning, you know, okay, uh, families, these pillars, I think, are, are for like a specific kind of society that uh-huh. what I'm hoping for is uh, in this late stage capitalism period that is totally terrifying. And uh-huh. the, the, the foundation under my feet of the world as I know it crumbling scares me too. Mm-hmm. But I also think perhaps something is being destroyed so a new world can be born. Right. That's the faith I keep holding out. Yeah. And as I turn to leaders and writing from the abolitionist movement and the feminist movement, it's really like this system hasn't been working for most people. Look at how it was, look at how baby boomers all own all the houses. The prices are crazy. Young people can't buy a house. Mm Mm-hmm. Young people, there are no jobs. Like, no wonder everybody's got time to protest. They, there's no job prospects. Mm-hmm. And AI is now coming for white-collar jobs. Mm-hmm. It's This is not working. The, no. This Again, back to, like, rooting myself in the reality, like, this system hasn't been working. And police brutality, for example, has been going on. And prisons have been imprisoning black and brown people at a disproportionate rate for weed crimes for decades. And... Gay people and trans people have been, you know, policed and over police. It's just like, yeah. it's not even, fuck it. You right. know what I mean? Fuck this fucking as- assembly of um, 300 million people. I think we can do better. Right. And, and I'm, I also, I'm sorry. I, I also, men, men, Roxanne Gay, I went, uh, has had this, said this thing once where she, that, just stuck with me forever. Men get to be experts and women have to cannibalize their experience. So this guy, one of my favorite writers, yes. gets, to be, gets to be the expert on like, <laughs> un- unfortunately things are failing. Well, girl, how about you are uncomfortable with your position faltering and un- and wavering mm-hmm. and p- potentially weakening? Right. Well, I think it is. And, you know, as you know, I'm paraphrasing your favorite writer. 
So I don't want you to be able to take all pot shots at him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but it is pretty, it's a very interesting thing that you bring up because the, an older guy, he's approaching 70. Uh, the, you're like, well, wait, you, you, you've taken all the pillars. You've taken all of the structure out of the house. We got to put the house back together. It is a younger perspective and, uh, to change it and be like, no, we're going to let it fall and we're going to build up a better house and it's going to make much more sense. And we're going to, it's going to be, it's going to benefit a lot more people. There's this great line in, uh, in, uh, this grateful dead song that I always hung on to even when I was younger. And I'm like, and it makes so much sense now as I am getting older, it's, uh, and a rich man in this summer home says, just leave well enough alone. Rich man in his summer home says, just leave well enough alone. You're like, everything's cool, mm. don't eh. And the young people are like, Well enough, meaning no. the way things are. The rich man in his summer home this is like, This is cool, it's, yeah, I yeah, made yeah. it, it's good, I'm making a margarita. It's like, this is all right. Yeah, no we're, shit, we're cool. bitch. Yeah. What do you mean you're going to yeah. protest? Stop right. it. That's I mean, right. when you look at the reactions to everybody protesting, it's a lot of people that are just like, no, 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 no. Right. <laughs> and it's like, order for what? Right. War? Like, why? <laughs> Be- like, why? Because I have a summer house. <laughs> right. And and also, no offense to Thomas Friedemann, I love him. <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> but also, he's 70. He's more likely to die before I am. Mm-hmm. He's less likely to be the leader <clears throat> of the culture mm-hmm. soon. Yeah. And rather than turn to the young people and ask what what's the deal? Where yeah. are things at and what is a potential answer? Yeah. Clinging to that role of leading, it's like but you don't even know what we're talking about over here for the new world. Right, exactly. You don't even know. No, and I like know. because I, it isn't really because it's undefined. It's it's kind of and to defend Thomas Friedman Oh, I your love favorite, him. which I love which, which I know it needs no defending in your not eyes. only incredible writer, but gorgeous. <laughs> he is a very handsome man. Gorgeous. Seventy? Uh the thrust of the article was how much has been damaged by uh Trump and this Which I appreciate. Just this destroying of which I appreciate. little guardrails and stuff. Yeah. Just in a social aspect and a political aspect that has really led to it being so he's so He's not completely out of touch as well. Not at all. Say. Like I, I don't even think so. And I, I actually can understand that he that in his um role, his age does afford wisdom and does afford time. He's right. hell he holds more time. Like yeah. and I um you know, uh I call that person Donald Duck, that former president you of do? ours. That's so smart. Donald yeah, I can't even have his name in my mouth. I know. Um so Donald Duck also exposed these little guardrails. I don't want Donald Duck to be president again. I, I didn't want him to be president in the first place. However, he he exposed things, I think, to a a majority of people, a mainstream culture, a white majority, a, a middle of the road, um, you know, uh, uh, what, what is it like a moderate white uh-huh. majority to polarizing mm-hmm. us to choose either side. Right. And while I want the guardrails up because I, I, I think he's Im- so dangerous and so violent and opens the door to so much immediate violence for all people mm-hmm. on the whole fucking planet. Yeah. While that's true and the most urgent thing, I also think these little guardrails, like if they're taken down, then hopefully that middle of the bell curve majority of people can come in mm-hmm. and hold what is happening and, yeah. and do the minimum it takes to make it as safe as it can be for most people. Well said. I wish you were smarter. The, uh, when I was watching I my daughter read more graduate, Friedman, baby. <laughs> when I was watching my daughter graduate, I cry at graduations. I, I had my niece's graduation too. I cry at graduations just because it's so. Oh my god! Even like when it's Fuck. not your kid. Fuck. Just seeing these young, bright, Fuck. smart. They were like giving out awards like the day before the thing. What these kids were studying, like in biology and chemistry and the arts, and it was just like, 
your brains held all that information. They're, they're, they're so, so smart. bright and smart. It's like, they're just, so brilliant. just get out there. Go do it. They're go, so go brilliant. And like, again, our society could be organized around protecting young minds. Yeah. We could make 22 year olds the leaders. They've had, can you imagine if when you went to school, I was fifth grade, I was in fifth grade when Columbine happened. Uh -huh. So I, I was, uh, uh, whatever, I was um, in the context of having mass shootings in school for yeah. the majority of my schooling. However, uh -huh. it wasn't as cockamamie oh. fucking fakakta as it is now. I yeah. mean, it makes no damn sense. Yeah. It, it's all I can do is laugh a, yeah. little, a little bit I and, know. and organize <laughs> and all that shit, but it's just so unbelievably yeah. nightmarish, twisted. So twisted. These people have survived mm -hmm. school where every day they could be shot up. Mm -hmm. They've survived something we haven't survived. Mm -hmm. and, no offense, but you certainly haven't. Yeah. Um, they shouldn't we be listening to them? Mm -hmm. Shouldn't they've survived the most? We have the the most sick planet, the least clean water available. The da 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 da. Yeah. Like, shouldn't we be organized around them? I know. And and the old the older generation wants to hold on to that position of leadership. Why don't you want to chill out? Yeah. That's the thing. Also, about like, well. What? Yeah, they are chilling out. <laughs> they're they're chilling out with power in in these. But like, don't you want to that... step aside? Like, aren't you sick of yourself? Yeah. <laughs> aren't you fucking sick of yourself? We are. You would think we're sick yeah. of you. I'm sick of me. I'm doing this press tour for like, I mean, a month, three weeks. I'm like, yeah, okay, yeah. you know, enough. All right. How uh how was being on tour? It was cool to see you um for the last several months posting your tour it was very cool to see thank you i don't remember you going out like heavily i i this was i think the fifth time i went on tour abby and i did one did how is that she's good yeah she's so good i adore her yeah she's really I've never met her she's really good that's you've got good taste she's, yeah she's adorable yeah um yeah she's she's that's good has peace yeah you know? That's great. Um, but this was, I think, the fourth or fifth time that I, I've gone on tour. And it mm -hmm. was so excellent on a personal level. Yeah. I have never taken so much pleasure <laughs> on the road as I have this time. I started in June 2023. Okay. Finished May 2023. Finished right. May 3rd. And um, we did 52 shows. Right. Right. My tour manager, Madeline Kim, sitting over here. Incredible. Hi. 30 under 30 <laughs> on a personal level. Um, uh, I She's my 30 under 30. Um, and because I'm a mom and because I have a little one, yeah. I was like, I can only be away two nights a week. Right. Sorry. That's my rule. Yeah. And it turns out nobody cares. They're fully down to do whatever the thing is that I want to do. And I didn't want to do weekends either because we like sort of melt into a puddle on weekends and then oh. we ravel for the week. And I'm like... This is going to destroy my marriage and my parenting relationship. Right. And my husband was like, what if you did like, because I would do, um, I would do some workout shows just like in the tri-state area on Tuesdays. Uh -huh. And then, then I did some Thursdays and he was like, why don't you just keep it at that? Yeah. And because I'm a parent, I had these boundaries up to do it the way that it works for me. Yeah. But I could have done that before. Yeah. But I only had that self-possession once I had a kid. Yeah. And it fucking ruled. That's so great. I was out Thursday, Fridays, and uh -huh. I would do that two weeks in a row, and the third week, take off, reset. And it was That's brilliant. fucking dope. <laughs> it's so stupid. It's that, so stupid. It's so stupid that, like, I've been doing it for 30 years and never thought of it. <laughs> I know. I never thought of it either. And David was like, wait, why don't we? And and I'm like, you know, you're so yeah. brilliant. You thought of another day of the week. It's not even that. But it's that we're so yeah. focused on the way things have been fed to us. Yeah. And we can't see around it. And I was so happy to be there with the people because I wasn't going to be, I wasn't, you know, feeling resentment and this and that because yeah. I miss my family. I was like. This rules. I'm happy to be with you. And then I go home and I'm happy to be with you. Yeah. It's and great. so, you know, 52 shows took 11 months. And, and I also had some big chunks over um, the holidays, December, mm -hmm. January, and and just like a few weeks off, like from summer into fall, yeah. you know, some chunks of yeah. uh, time. But man, was it awesome. Yeah. I, I can't wait to get out again because yeah. I had such a good experience. Did you film it? Yeah. You did? Yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. I filmed it in Toronto. Oh, nice. It was so fun. It Massey? Was, 
um, Elgin and Winter Garden. Oh, Winter Theater. Garden. Yeah. Gorgeous. It's, it's a great place. It was, I, I feel so yeah. blessed and grateful for the whole tour. Yeah. And for that experience, I, I couldn't, I, I, I've, it was transformative. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> really, that is a huge thing. Yeah. I remember Maria Bamford doing that early on uh, where she was just like, I'm just going to go out on Tuesdays and Wednesdays and whoever shows up, shows up. And, and they know, showed up. And yeah, you know, and it was, yeah, it was pretty brilliant. Yeah, it's she's she's organized it. her own mental health. Um, she's so great in a way that yeah, she's incredible. Yeah. Uh, one of my early heroes. Yeah, being a kid watching Comedy Central, you know, yeah. watching you guys and like getting to talk to you now, it's like damn. Yeah, comedy's fucking cool. Well, yeah, it's so cool because I that's my perspective is watching you, and now I get to talk to you. It's like I, that's what oh. I love about comedy. It's I love so, it so good. Much. People are like, "What do you want to do next?" I'm like, the exact same thing <laughs> right. again. Like, what, was oof. it hard to get a a a big proper movie up and up and running? Um, we didn't. It's have, a whole nother gear. We didn't have. Um, we, we had a, a miraculously speedy process. Yeah. Um, because the wonderful film nation and range media invested in this movie. So we started writing the movie in January, 2021 and we got it greenlit by January, 2022. Wow. Pretty unheard of. Yeah. But because we weren't going through the studio system. Right. And like, (laughs) did you go to the studios at first? We sent it out wide. You You did. Yeah. And I, I don't even know if they wanted it. Or, or did we send it out just to percent. reps, actually, and production companies? I think we did that. Yeah. Um, yes, we, we did that because we wanted to make it. We wanted to try to make it. Yeah. And if you get into the studio system, it's a system in which most movies are not made. So we didn't we didn't send it um, right. that way. And I'm so glad we did it this way. And this was Susie Fox's instincts. And it was the best. You know, Josh kept saying that, like, no matter what, right before the movie came out, no matter what happens, like, we made a movie. We yeah. made something good that we're proud of, that we love, and nothing gets made. Yeah. Today, no, exactly. And and, and and comedies. Yeah. It's um. Yeah. So so that was really uh that was really uh, a privilege and a, a lucky. That's thing. so great. I mean, it's such a huge undertaking. It's such a it's such a it's such a big lift. It was so crazy. Was it a, what was it like writing it, knowing you're going to be in it, and then handing it off? I mean, you had a great director handing it off to her uh do you have to step away a little bit do you have to kind of like now i'm gonna just be the actor or well i produced it to Susie and josh and i like i didn't really step away exactly like i were just involved in all the conversations right every every day but um so you're more like partners with her than yeah. yeah, but you know Pamela Adlon, who directed this movie, she's her so feature directorial debut. Um, she's so used to having a tribe of creatives, you uh-huh. know, around her and with her, and she's um, a mother of three. She knows what it's like to like work with people, right? You know? <laughs> yeah, and um, her like the texture that she gave this movie, and I'm just remembering like in prep, you know, like that. I stepped away. I didn't like location scout and stuff, and like the way she. Yeah. You know, pick places with like a special, a special sparkle to them was really, it was so, she was just coming off five seasons of Better Things, which yeah. is such an amazing show. And like, um, so musical and so colorful and so textured. You and felt that style in this. Yeah. 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 She really has that rock star energy yeah. that we got in our movie. Something classic and a little seventies, you know, yeah. like so cool. And like. I, we, Josh and I are born, I think Josh is 87, but like born in the, in the 80s, but like real kids in the 90s. And yeah. like um, <laughs> Pamela as a kid in the 70s, you could feel that. Mm-hmm. That's, I don't know, you could just yeah. feel it. And yeah. um, and so, yeah, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I'm really involved. But the acting, I worked with my friend Aaron Himmelstein, who's a really talented acting coach. Uh-huh. And to like do this process of separating myself from the script right. and have it be like the material it was really like, uh-huh. oh my gosh, like felt like a privilege too. Like this self actual this privilege of self actualization of um kind of looking reflecting on my work and finding the unconscious meaning in it. Uh-huh. To hear what somebody else thinks, which I always I find such a privilege that anybody gives a shit to see or hear what I have to say or make. Yeah. And then to get feedback is like it's such a privilege because it's like then I hear like, oh yeah, I guess that was 
kind of the sense I had when I was putting it out there, but I didn't realize it at the time. Wait, well, getting the feedback when? Like, well, I mean, even now with the movie out, oh, with, out. with Aaron Himmelstein and okay. him saying about the script, well, you know, for example, the, all, the my scene with Oliver Platt, who plays my father. Yeah, it was so great to see. I was It was <laughs> such a great moment because I'm like, oh, who's going to be the dad? And then he walks out, I was like, oh, it's so great. He's so, oh my God. just that conversation, he's just so... Mm natural heavy like he has yeah. such a heft on screen and yeah. speaking of age he just brings like age and wisdom and perspective yeah like, and and he's just so new york i actually used to um <laughs> i i nannied for um a family for a long time and when i would pick their kids up at grace church school oliver's kids were there too oh yeah and i would see him as we'd be like all waiting and i'd be like oh my god that's fucking oliver platt holy <laughs> shit that's oliver platt fuck oh my god <laughs> and then suddenly i'm acting with him yeah, and telling it's... him about watching him in grace church school it was really cool <laughs> it's so cool um and he's just so new york and uh <laughs> has all these layers and so for aaron to be looking at the script and being like well this is this is why eden my character um, needs Dawn to mother her because she didn't have a mother. We know that her mother's passed, but her father, we see her mothering him here. And I yeah. was like, holy shit. Yeah. Like, I did mean that. You're right. Yeah. But like, also, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Like, you know, so that experience was yeah, so, oh, I see what you're saying. so cool. Yeah. Such a privilege. It's a cool thing now that that scene kind of, kind of um, alerted me to something I think that is kind of common now which i don't think it was earlier in comedies at least that uh like there's no like we don't there's no fixing him there's no fix right. like there's no right there's like there's an acceptance now now that we're talking about all this stuff and it's like we're not right just brushing things and you know and, but there's a there's, there's just this an acceptance that mm. there are people like that or just yep. he's just gonna be that yep it's kind of cool. Yeah, you're right that it used to, there used to be a denial, and even like the idea of like Sex in the City and that and that era of dating shows, mm -hmm. and from a woman's perspective or supposedly a woman's perspective of fixing a man, it's just like so sad. Yeah. Not only is it's, it like, girl, you're not you're not gonna do that. You're not gonna fix. But also, it's like that man has to be fixed. It's so sad. I know. But there is this instinct. My wife talks about it all the time. And she would start out as a waitress at the comic strip. And she talks about when the comic would be up there like, oh, you know, I just can't get a girl. And, and all the girls would just kind of lean in like, I can fix you. I, I got you. There is that instinct that's just hardwired. Yep. <laughs> and it's so, and that's watch it. I, when I tell my daughters, it's like any inkling of a guy asking that from you, get out. <laughs> and you know what? It's also like, you know what? It's also making me think of it being like personhood and women weren't fully afforded personhood. And this is their way to gain it by helping a man fulfill his. Mm -hmm. Whereas like my husband and I are like so therapy focused and so like, focused on self-actualizing and just being at peace that it's like we do it together yeah and it's like women i don't know then the next step was women being like i'm not fixing a man so what do i do now like there wasn't even <laughs> yeah. and it's like girl you need right. to be fixed you need to be healed yeah you should go get pleasure but like yeah oof, i'm so glad i wasn't yeah i'm so glad i'm the age i am now yeah right Oh yeah yeah no offense but um just seemed like tough to date during that period violent for both sides <laughs> i know it's so complicated i know just watching my girls like start yeah, what are they to figure to? What's it that out a, what's that like they seem healthy they seem you know they're gonna they've been in some things that you know didn't work out but uh you just you know we haven't got to go through it you know it's kind of like good. my it's kind of like my daughter like coming to new york and like starting her career and my wife's like, and which my wife and I both did. We lived on $5 a day here in New York, like starting out. And, but then when you watch your kid do it, it's just like, ah, uh, it's the same thing with dating. It's like, oh, but you can't, you can't tell them. But the they mistakes. clearly, your girls clearly have such a strong base to return to that yeah. they're not going to get too abused. Yeah. Uh, which yeah. is really the most you can give a kid. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's really, that's really right. <sighs> You're right about coming to New York in the summer. It's like I always, when I was here, I would always Ooh, be like, "You got to do it." I loved when everybody would leave. Everyone starts dumping the out to the Hamptons best. and dumping out. You're the just best. like, "Oh, this is so great." Yeah, it's so 
fun and kinetic yeah. and there's so much energy and everybody's checking everybody out. It's like <laughs> so fun. My husband and I met um, in Washington Square Park. Oh, you did? On a hot, horny summer day. No. Just checking each other out. Just checking each other out. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's just such a good vibe. Who said who, who said hi first? Um, we like just looked at each other and we were like... <laughs> 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 it was like so immediate um, amazing and then it was very mutual it was yeah very mutual yeah yeah it's yeah. great but it was really mutual it really was yeah. it was like it was cool but like we both were like you know <laughs> everybody was out for the same thing you know <laughs> oh, it's amazing <laughs> you know <laughs> <laughs> it's so fun. I hear you about yeah. wanting to be with your kids, but maybe you guys can like pop out here. No, a hundred percent. Yeah. My wife's teaching now. Where? In LA. Taking care of more kids? Come on. I know. Um I teaching know. what? Fifth grade. Oh, that's so sweet. Oh, so I she's know. off for the summer though. She is off for the summer. Cynthia. Yeah. So we can do whatever we want. Yeah, so dope. Yeah. I think it's like cool too to be like, sorry to your kids. Like we're busy. That's nice. I know. I was thinking about that. that. Yeah, because we're going to do a couple things, and it's we're looking at the calendar, and it was like, oh yeah, we're just gonna leave the girls and just go. So cool. Yeah, it is. That is cool. And it's cool for them to have the house and be trusted with it, and they're not gonna fuck shit up too much. I know, it's not cool. too much. It's so funny now that now that the uh, every house comes with those ring doorbells, those <laughs> cameras. It's so funny watching them. Come back into the house. <laughs> Gosh, you know what Pamela had that scared the shit out of me? She has her like speedometer of her girl's car. No. As an app. And I was like, What? And they're going 90. And I was like, Girl, ground her. <laughs> that is so scary. I don't know how she. And she's, oh my she's God. like, You know, and if you watch her show, you definitely know she's like, You gotta, gotta let kids go yeah. through what they go through in, in a very wise way. But I'm like, Not that. Oh. I mean, not that. You know what I mean? 70s. I know. Uh, ooh, ooh. I know. My, I just got a ticket on my desk from my daughter in New York. It was like going 80. On your desk? Yeah, it came to my house. Oh. And I was like, <laughs> you got 80? I'm like speeding? Yeah, 80. Driving in New York? In New York State. She went to school in um, Poughkeepsie. Where? Vassar. Yes. Did you go there? No. Thomas Friedman did. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, I brought you this. I usually in LA I would bake you bread. I bake a ton of bread. Oh my god. And um because I'm not oh my in god, Los this Angeles. Is awesome. It's a country loaf from uh Oh, from it's Vesuvio. gorgeous. You're so yeah. sweet. I'm just gonna look at it. Yeah, take it home, give it to your family. Mm, I'm gonna smell it. Yeah. Oh yummy. Sorry. I know. They're good stuff. Thank you so much. You're Wait. so welcome. Oh my god, is that noisy? Let me just for the for everybody wants. <laughs> Yeah, they love that, like and they that, love Mike? and they love chewing. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> oh, that is so sweet. And um, um, before you go, parent. because I don't Thank want you. you to leave without saying it. Also, uh, Michelle was fantastic. Your, I mean, the thing that. Like I said, it hooked me early. Mm. It was your love affair with her. Yes, that really was That's so right. good. And watching her, watching her <sighs> evolve. I've talked to her on my radio show, like in the beginning, like with her stand up and stuff. But she's really coming into like another level. We are so lucky to be a part of Michelle Buteau's moment. Yeah, she is blossoming. She really she is. is. Mother, she is. As you remember from the scene in the movie. Yeah, I'm. I'm just improvising there. Like she's the sun. She yeah. is a sunshine. Sun. She yeah. is sunshine. She is filled with light. She is luminous. She is magnetic. She is so funny. Yeah, and we were talking about all these like super famous, successful actresses who I totally admire, but it was just feeling so contrived as a process yeah and when Susie and josh and i took a step back uh-huh and took a beat i like woke up in the middle of the night like michelle buteau <laughs> buteau <laughs> michelle obsessed. it's so good she's so busy that, that she is so busy I begged her and she uh, once once she could see it she was yeah. like ah oh, fuck i do have to do this she is incredible she is such a good actor she is yeah as she says funny as the day is long but her <laughs> acting she's so good and so, so good. real so I know. real uh it it is i am privileged to have her in this movie but to have gotten to play with her like yeah that. oh the my gosh labor. Can I, can the I tell labor you, oh the labor <laughs> can i tell under, you yeah. she's so busy we got her in three weeks for real 
15 business days. No. And the whole movie was 25 business days. Whoa. Crazy. That's amazing. She gave that heft of a performance in 15 business days. Jeez. Well, Labor. she knew what she, she obviously knew what she wanted to do. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. it's, it's in every single scene. Yeah. I love when you uh, are in your yoga studio and you, you're checking your message. That reaction when you're checking mm-hmm. your message. That little, mm-hmm. So great. Hate. <laughs> you have such good little moves. Thank you. You have such good <laughs> little comedy moves that Thank are you. so you. Thank you. Really, really great. So congratulations. That was Thank really you. You, you made it. You did it. Thanks, brother. Yeah. And really nice spending time with you. You too. What a pleasure and a privilege this yeah. conversation has been. What are you going to do the rest of the day? I have one more little podcast. Nice. And um, it's so nice out. We're asking our nanny to stay an extra hour so my husband and I can have a little drink. <laughs> nice. What will the drink be? I'm going to get a phony Negroni. I'm like not drinking and it, I'm much happier. And I think. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, so just that, just to like spend a little hour. Yeah, that's great. <gasps> oh, look at what Mike pulled out. And noble, totally a word. And I wasn't, it was a word. I wasn't was bothering me the whole day. I wasn't questioning as though no, I didn't I, believe you. I, I was asking, what does that mean? It means lend greater dignity or nobility of character to. Oh my God. Gosh, that's what you do it's, in everything. Oh, thank you. That's for that's real. A, a much better. That's much better than enabling. I love that there's such a similar <laughs> uh, option. I've Ennoble. been playing Spelling Bee on my phone. You know the New York Times Spelling Bee. It's a little. I get it, but I don't little, know it. It's a. It's like a word jumble. Like there's sure. seven letters, and you got to make words. Yeah. The whole time after since then, and they were, as I'm trying to pay attention to you, I was thinking, yeah. would a noble be a word, or would yeah. it say it's not a word? Right. And what's interesting about a noble is it it doesn't sound like it's so long, but it's seven letters. Yeah, which is good. That would be big points. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> what's the um analog uh version of that where you like? Uh, take boggle. Boggle. Yeah. I always love a boggle. Um, thanks for having me. This is thanks so Thanks for being dope. here. Truly. Thanks. Let's do it again. Yeah. Thank you, Mikey. Thanks, brother.